All right, YouTube, Repo Man 64. Headed home. Long day, days worth of work. Um, I made a video yesterday. I have attempted to upload it three different times, and every time I upload it, no audio. This time, it's not my fault. I have audio on my end. I know what I did last time. I forgot to turn on the mic. So I'm going to uh, go on the computer. I've uploaded it to the cloud, and I'm going to uh, play it uh, from there. And hopefully at that point, I'll have audio. I thought it was a pretty good video. And uh, this audio problem I keep having, I can never narrow down exactly. I notice that uh, when I go over one hour uh, on the video, or close to an hour, that uh, the audio doesn't upload. I, I don't know what that is. I even paid for the premium uh, for these people, and apparently, I don't know, it's not enough. I, I, they keep they keep coming at me to, uh, you, know, you can make all this money. I, I, I never charge a dime for anything I do, so I couldn't do that in good conscience. And uh, But I have a feeling they could care less because they're not making any money off of what I do. It's the only thing I can think of. So if I get close to an hour, it doesn't upload. So seeing all the stuff going on, you know, in the movies, uh, uh, what was there was I forget the uh, forget the name of the movie, but uh, it all starts on a Friday. Uh, so tomorrow's Friday. Uh, could we see something huge go down tomorrow? Remember, always remember, Amos three seven. God is going to tell us. It's not going to come as a surprise. Uh, I've seen a lot of YouTubers lately make the claim that we're just not going to know anymore. It's just, we're not going to know, or some are even giving into the to the concept because of the uh, the fig tree generation that we're already in tribulation and uh, it must have meant this, and it, it doesn't. We we've misunderstood the fig tree generation. I explained that in the video. Israel became a nation on May 14, 1948. Israel will cease to be a nation on May 13th or 14th of year 2028. You count back three and a half years to the beginning of the tribulation, and that's 11-11, November the 11th, the day Noah got off the ark. The fig tree, when it says, and we fly away, everybody's like, oh, that's a rapture. But if you go look at the words in Greek or Hebrew, whatever it is, uh, not my strong point, but if I go into Strong's and look at the words fly away, it literally has nothing to do with the rapture. It is a protection, and that's exactly what's going to happen. Israel, the Jews are going to leave Israel. Israel will cease to be a nation in three and a half years on May 14th of 2028, and uh, they will fly away. They will go to, well, I we don't know that it's Petra 100%, but God says he's going to protect them that the enemies will send a great flood. And we've learned that since they were attacked on uh, October the 7th, which is the last day uh, of uh, the last day of, uh, what is the, the, the last, uh, Trump, uh, no, uh, Tabernacles. The eighth day is when Jesus was named and circumcised on October the 7th. And I uh, showed you that on the timeline. And in fact, on October the 7th, the last day, and last year the timeline matched with the, the Hebrew calendar, which was nice. For six months, it all matched. And, and people were like, oh, he's on to something. You know, you don't just add 21 days to a calendar. It just doesn't work that way. So this, they call themselves the al Kiosk. I believe it was flood because they came flooding across the border and they did some terrible things to a lot of people. And they just found, I think, six more uh, dead. They're all my age. I like gray hair. I'm like, just kill the old people? What's up with that? We still have some life left in us. <laughs> so um, they got six, six bodies out of there. And so these people are just evil. They're evil. And, uh, you know, they started this. And then, of course, you got a bunch of people whining about uh, Palestine. But this is these are the most humane. This is the most humane war that we've ever seen. They have taken more caution and care for uh, the innocence on that. side. it's not always going to work out perfectly, but they they have they, they could have just gone in their blanket carpet to, to bomb this place and ended it immediately. But they've been very pre 
precise. They've, they've done it with precision, gone in. And this guy now, this guy that's in charge that started this whole thing, is in there going, um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll give up if you guys promise not to kill me. Did the uh, people that you, you came across the border and murdered have that same opportunity? No, I'm sorry. They're going to find you. They're going to get you, and you're going to die. And you will stand in front of God and explain why you went against his people. And those are his people. And uh, that's the end of that. So anyway, um, we're seeing earthquakes going uptick like crazy. Uh, one of the last things that we're supposed to see is the waves and the seas roaring. I think that's the, the only thing we haven't really seen yet. We've tried to say, well, it's the ships out on the ocean. That's that's not it. It's There's going to be such an earthquake that the waves and the seas are going to uh, become upset. And another thing is Damascus. Do we know for certain, and I don't know that we do, that Damascus will cease to be a city just prior to the rapture? Now, Paul, on his way to Damascus, was blinded for three days. Now, anything under four days is three days. If it's not four days, it's three days. And I believe it was the same amount of time that Jesus spent in the grave of 84 hours, three and a half days. Still three days. It's not four days. So will we see, and that's honestly what I would do, I would, I would count that. If that event took place, I would count that as... If Damascus were destroyed, the moment it was destroyed, I would count it 84 hours from there. And I would also count it as a, a heads up from God and Amos 3, 7 being completely fulfilled that he told us. And uh, I still don't believe that Israel will nuke Damascus. Everybody's like, they're going to nuke them. They're, no, they're not. Sinwar was the guy's name, by the way. This guy is going to send. They, they it, Russia has sent a ton of stuff over their flights, just going in nonstop into Damascus, just dropping off of just a plethora of stuff for them to go up against Israel. And they're just amassing all this stuff, right? And uh, guidance systems and rockets and everything else to deploy whatever it is that uh, that uh, they wanted to deploy on Israel. But the problem is they don't know how to operate this stuff as well as the people who may. I don't know if you I don't know about you, but I can't read Russian, <laughs> you know. So good luck with that. They're going to hit this button. They're going to put in the coordinates of where they are. The rocket's going to go up in the air and come back down right on top of them. And blow, they're going to blow themselves up. Damascus will be destroyed by Damascus. In other words, God will fulfill that prophecy. He will send them a great delusion, a confusion, and they will put in the wrong stuff and they will blow themselves up. Just like, and we have to have a perfect example of the wedding that was going on in Damascus when all that fertilizer blew up. Fertilizer. All their stuff that they had. It was a fireworks factory. <laughs> it was your, your, uh, your armory, your, your depot, <laughs> you, it, you messed up. And they're going to mess up, I believe, and blow themselves up. They'll try to blame Israel, but, I mean, anybody with a, with a satellite can see that it didn't come from Israel. They'll blow themselves up. And I think that's uh, something, if we see that from that moment, we can count 84 hours. Um, so we're right on the edge of this rapture. Don't get worn out. Don't give up on the fig tree generation. It was just a misunderstanding. And that's there's nothing wrong as we I'll tell you what, seven years. I thought I knew. I thought I knew the Bible. I've been reading it my whole life. right? I thought I knew it until the last seven years, the seven years of plenty. The Holy Spirit has been poured out on all of you and me. And we know things now that we never knew seven years ago. We would have never dream, dreamt of the things that we know currently as opposed to what we knew seven years ago. So, yes, the seven years of plenty are almost over from the Revelation 12 sign on September the 24th. Now, I had somebody in there going, oh, I'm, I'm looking at pictures of September the 23rd. And the moon's definitely under her feet. So 
I don't always trust alert. My solarium shows me it's under her feet on the 24th, not the 25th, and the 24th at nightfall. And I always use Israel as my base. So the 24th at nightfall became the 25th, which is the Day of Atonement. That's the Day of Atonement. I'm behind a guy that's doing like 20 in a 45. Does that even make sense? He's like, he thinks he's an Indy Pace car, I guess, and he's going to set the pace for everybody. Going over here. Excuse me one second. All right. You won't be able to see him. Do you stare at people with a... Yeah, I probably shouldn't do that. <laughs> Why are you driving so slow? All right, so anyway, um, totally lost my train of thought there. Don't know where I was. Just, we're going home soon. We are going home soon. And, um, oh, the 25th, uh, the Day of Atonement, is when the Revelation 12 sign happened. And it's not going to happen on trumpets. Trumpets is in October the 3rd. Trumpets is and always will be on September the 15th. And um, the Day of Atonement will always land on September the 25th. And Jesus will have always been, just like your birthday doesn't change each year, neither does Jesus. He was born on, at, on, at nightfall on the 29th, becoming the 30th. So and that's what I like about the timeline. It's solid. It's consistent. It doesn't move. It doesn't budge. It doesn't change. There's no, uh, you know, I mean, this moon theory was a pagan thing that we all complain. It's Halloween is a pagan thing. Christmas is a pagan thing. Easter is a es esitar. It's all a pagan thing. But have you looked far enough back to see that this has been going on forever? And in 400 B.C., King Antiochus forced the new moon worship. On, and you can go back. I mean, you can go Google it. <laughs> Why would we ever do anything with the moon in relation to when a year starts or a month starts? Now, the moon is very important because it gives us our blood moons and eclipses and stuff like that. But it's irrelevant when it comes to dates. And so like the moon under her feet, that was super important. That's what God uses that for. I don't believe it's used for anything other than that. And uh, so anyway, I digress. Um we are going home very soon. Like I said, and again, I'm going to attempt to upload the video. Hopefully it works. But in the video, I said I gave a bunch of dates. We can't be here on Halloween when the flood starts. We can't be here on November the 11th, 11-11. Maybe that's why we're all seeing 11-11, when the Jews must leave. In 2028, when the Jews must, oh, well, not 2028, but in the three and a half year mark prior to 2028 being November the 11th of 2024. We can't be here for that. We can't be here for when the flood begins, because I think that's when tribulation begins. Or maybe this tribulation begins prior to that, but the first seal opens up. We can't be here on the Day of Atonement, the seven year anniversary of the Revelation 12 sign on September the 24th. We can't be here for that. Because um, the Day of Atonement is a day where the Jews reconcile to God, and they will do that at the end of the seven years. So their seven-year count begins on that day. I don't think we can be here on Feast of Trumpets because Feast of Trumpets, I've heard so many say that it's not a really good rapture scenario, uh, the Day of Trumpets or Feast of Trumpets. So you have the Feast of Trumpets, Day of Atonement, and um, Tabernacles. and uh, then we we walk backwards and we wind up to where we are uh, now and we'll look forward to September the 11th, which is the first day God began creation. Most people will agree and then jumble their calendars up from that moment forward that the flood happened on October the 31st or November the 11th. November th October the 31st is the day it started. November the 11th is the day Noah got off the ark a year and 10 days later. They will also agree that creation began on September the 11th. They will all agree on that. or most mostly agree on that. They won't agree that it's a lull 28. They'll say it's a lull 25, which they're, what they're attempting to do when they do that is they're attempting to make uh, God rest on trumpets. He didn't rest on trumpets. He rested on Tishri 3. He rested after trumpets. So on uh the 17th day of uh, what we would call, or the seventh day, I'm sorry, on the seventh day, and I think it works out to being uh, September 17th, 7th, 17th, 
we've all seen 717, right? So that's a high watch day, September the 17th, September the 11th. And then we have the 21 days. I, I referenced the, the rapture puzzle. She hasn't had a video in forever. And then she notices that on uh, August the 15th, which is on my timeline, which is when it's a little one, a little one has passed. Uh, and that is the day that Jesus began his fast on a little one. So she notices that uh, Jupiter and Mars, she has a really good video. You got to go watch it, the rapture puzzle. And uh, she makes a really good argument that uh, this is referencing the Prince of Persia holding up Jesus for 21 days. And Michael came to help. And then he shows up 21 days later. So if you go from a little one, you'd wind up on a little 21. And, uh, you know, 21 days later, and I don't recall while I'm driving uh, what date that is, but it is, I, I want to say, well, if, if the calendars are 75 days off, that's 15 days each month and 21. So that would be um, September the 7th, September the 7th, which is a cool number, too, because it's exactly um, uh, seven days or 10 days before. I, I don't know. I have to go in and look. I, I do this in the video. So anyway, heads up. Stay strong. We're going home soon. It is going to happen. And nobody, me or anybody else, is going to give you the date. But it is going to be given. This is not going to come as a surprise. You're not just going to be walking along. The rest of the world will. They will be eating and drinking and marrying and giving in a marriage. They will be doing that. Not you. You're going to be like, an event just took place. The waves of the seas roaring or Damascus or something. Something will happen. And we will know because God promised that he was going to in his word. And God doesn't break a promise. Amos 3, 7 was abundantly clear and is speaking directly to each and every uh, dispensation that he was going to warn them. He warned Noah, hey, in 120 years from now, I'm flooding this planet. He comes to Noah, hey, in seven days from now, I'm flooding this planet. Get on the ark. You know, I don't know of. Any destruction that took place where God did not warn the prophets and the say those he was going to save first. He did the same thing for Lot. Go in there. Now, other people heard it, but they didn't believe it. They thought it was a joke. It was it was a complete joke, they thought, you know. So we are going to stand if 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 we change our stance on a pre-tribulational rapture. On a um, uh, Jesus only. That's it. Once saved, always saved. Jesus only. We don't need anything else. Everything else we do is butter on the bread. What do you say? Icing on the cake. Icing on the cake. You know? Everything else is just icing on the cake. The only thing that you have to do, just like the, the Ethiopia did with Philip there, do you, do you accept this? Do you believe this? Yes, I do. Okay, um, what stops me from going to get baptized? As long as you accept this and believe this, now you can. People are getting baptized to save themselves. Baptism doesn't save you. Baptism of the Holy Spirit, faith on Jesus, and Jesus alone, with no works whatsoever, none. You're never going to go to heaven and say, I did this and I did that. You've done nothing. I've done nothing. We've done nothing. We are just sitting here and we're just praying. We're just praying, uh, is it Luke is it Luke 21, 36, to be counted worthy, to escape all these things. That's it. That's all. We're saved. Every saved person, and I want to clarify that. People keep getting confused. Every saved person who has accepted the sole works of Jesus Christ and nothing else, taking that cup and just drank it down, you know, like an excited bride, those people are all going to heaven. Whether you're uh, into eschatology, really studying timelines, looking at numbers, the clouds, uh, you know, the world events, uh, dreams and visions, you name it. God is, in essence, telling us all stuff, right? Telling us all something. So if you um, are doing all this stuff, there's an indicator that you are saved. But that doesn't mean that there aren't people out there who are uh, in a and in, in, in hiding under a table in some foreign country, just praying simp with the most simplicity in the universe, Jesus, 
I don't know you. I've heard of you. There's literally bombs going off outside my house. And if you're real, please save me. Boom. Done. Did those people do anything? Nothing. <laughs> they didn't do anything. So believe on that, on Christ, and that's it. That's all, like uh, Aaron says over God. That's it. I'm a child of God. That's it. And that's all. Nothing else I've ever done. You know, this pride thing I keep seeing coming into people because God enlightens you on passages and, and you're able to type passages together. Somehow you think that, uh, you know, that that uh, makes you uh, more saved than, they have, than others. I suppose the Holy Spirit is in you, so you should be well, the guy under the table that's uh, waiting for a bomb to drop on his house. The Holy Spirit's in him, too. And he's just as important as anybody else. As 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 the uh, just as important as the greatest preacher that ever lived that understood the Bible better than any of us. So anyway, let me get off here. Repo Man 64. Keep your heads up. Keep looking to the skies. We are going home very soon. Stay encouraged and don't don't give up on your and your pre-tribulational stance simply because the fig tree. Ge- Stop jumping from date to date in the fig tree generation. It was May 14, 1948. That's it. We just didn't understand the passage. Go look up, fly away. It is has nothing to do with the rapture. It's talking to the Jews. They will have to leave Israel uh, when they're 80, before they turn 80. And they turn 80 on May 14th of 2028. So that's it. That, 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 that clearly explains that. Everything that we think we know, and then suddenly it doesn't fit because time has gone past. And then we say, well... Let's change it or let's let's not believe in it anymore. You're making a huge mistake. You have just misunderstood it. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. But don't get stuck. Don't get keep hanging on to something. Don't keep trying to. Well, let's if we just, you know, stop trying to fit around puzzle uh, uh, around. What is it? The little kid's toy where there's a round piece into a square hole. You, it just doesn't fit. Stop trying to push it in there. We misunderstood it. And that's all there is to it. So, but anyway, keep keep strong. I'm going to attempt to upload this video. Um, if not, then uh, if it doesn't work, then I don't know if I play it live. There's so many complaints about uh, the the pumps going off while the video is playing, and I can't silence the uh, I can't silence the sound in there. I wonder if I could put a piece of tape over the microphone. Would that that might work, right? I don't know. I could try that, or maybe I, maybe I'll hook up my headphones and put them like somewhere around a corner. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to do that. I'll uh, I'll try to figure that uh, sound problem out. I have so many technical issues. All right, Repo Man sixty four. Go to a quiet place by yourself. Nobody needs to know, and you don't need to tell anybody. And take that cup and happily drink from it. Jesus is offering you salvation. That's it. That's all. It's that simple. That's all over the past thousand, two thousand years since Jesus came for us. That's it was always that simple. It's that simple. Like, comment, share and subscribe. And we'll chat with you all again later.